Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next episode of Buds and Blue Jays. This is episode 145 of Buds and Blue Jays. I'm Jesse Burrell, joined, as always, by my co-host, Riley McConnell. And, Riley, not a lot has happened in Blue Jays land since our last episode, but the rumor mill is swirling. There's a lot of big things happening. In fact, it is rumored that the Toronto Blue Jays might actually go out and make some big moves this offseason. I hope this isn't just writer speak, and I hope this actually does come true. So today on our episode, we're going to look at some of the potential big moves the Blue Jays could make, including what if we do go out and sign Shohei Otani? What if we do make a trade for Juan Soto? What if we do make a trade for Mike Trout? What if we do something you aren't even thinking of? We're going to cover all of that on this episode here today. Plus, we have coaching news and so much more. But first, Riley, how are you feeling, man? How's your week been? Week has been very, very busy, probably a lot busier than the Jays front office as of right now. <laughs> Hopefully that changes a little bit, Jesse. Um, I thought, you know, there are ways to make splashes in the offseason as far as additions to your ball club goes. Um, we clearly didn't make the right moves last year to make a successful team. because, And not a lot of them were huge moves. And the Jays have made big moves in the past. Um, bringing in players uh, to make potential championship teams. And you said some pretty delicious names, Jesse. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, when you're, when you're talking about guys like uh, Mike Trout and Juan Soto, I mean, we're talking about the best of the best in major league baseball. And yeah, um, I think we could really use a player like that, especially because no one really, except for, uh, you know, I make the argument, except for Kevin Gosman, and maybe Bo Bichette, like we don't really, we no one played like a superstar last year. And I think, Correct, yep. we, I, I think we could probably use a superstar type player if the slack is not going to be picked up for from the guys that we think should be, you know, driving in all these runs. So let's look like big picture at the Toronto Blue Jays right now. You kind of mentioned on the head, the Blue Jays have a lot of like these one and a half to three war players. They have good players all across the diamond. Like you said, we just kind of seem to be missing that big superstar. This team reminds me a lot of like the 2019 Dodgers, right? Where they had good players all across the roster. They were getting into the playoffs consistently, but could never make much noise when they got into those playoffs. Kind of sounds like our Toronto Blue Jays right now. And that was the winter they went out and traded for Mookie Betts. And look, they won the World Series in 2020, and they've been a force literally ever since that's the position I kind of see these Toronto Blue Jays team in right now. And we, if we go out and make one big move, like trade for a Mookie Betts type or trade for a Freddie Freeman type. That might be the move that we need to do to get us over the top and over that hump. Because look, Riley, let's be real. I know we've mentioned this several times. We now have two more seasons left with Bo Bichette, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., um, Kevin Gosman, Eric Swanson, Kevin Biggio, Jordan Romano under contract, right? Once that free agent run hits, it might be hard for these Blue Jays to keep going. So our chance to win a World Series is in the next two years. And I really do think getting one of these big name players is going to help us achieve that goal in this next two years. And if ownership and management knows that, um, that it is a two-year window, I mean, we're not waiting for the second year of that window. Mm -hmm. um, we, we need to make the splash now. And I mean, yes, the, I mean, look, you could look at it and say it's now or never. And that doesn't apply to a lot of to a lot of ball clubs at this point. Like you mentioned, I mean, the Orioles could win the division 10 more times um, in the next 12 years, looking at their um, current roster and their farm system. And then the Dodgers as well have built, you know, a near dynasty. And then the Blue Jays have been really compared to like a lot of clubs, a B tier team, um, you know, with, you know, when not all cylinders are firing, a lot of guys missing their strides at points in the year. And we're really, I mean, uh, uh, basically, if you want to call getting beat twice in a playoff series a sweep, well, we haven't won a playoff series and won a play or since won 2016. A playoff game. Since 2016. Won a, play a playoff game. I mean that's that that's important, man. Especially with the guys that are on the field and that and that we currently have. I mean, we should be doing, you know, better than we have been. And I know it's uh, you know easier said than done. But I'm not waiting for year two of this window. Like if we're making a splash, we're doing it this free agency. You know, we're also trying to going to make some trades as well. Like we're trying to bring mm -hmm. in yes. Riley, we lost you. He got so excited. Elementary players, and I like a good guy who's good. If if no one's gonna carry the role of superstar, if it's not if it's not Vladdy, who's gonna you know 
drive in 110 runs or he's going to hit less than 30 home runs, then I want someone on this team that's going to do that. I want some, mm-hmm. I want a security blanket. I want a for sure thing. Cause right now, besides Kevin Gosman and Bo Bichette, I don't know if there's a for sure thing because I love when I love when Gosman toes the rubber. I feel comfortable. Everyone else, tiny bit of a question mark. When Bo Bichette, if the game's on the line, there's no one more I want at the dish than Bo Bichette. Everyone else, huge question mark beside their names. And after that, I'm ca- two guys. I count 24 more spots. So for me, it's, there's a lot up in the air, man. And I would not would not care a whole lot if there was a big shift, but a positive shift where we're bringing in winners, guys that have accolades, guys that have been there won before. I mean, I'm kind of ranting here, but Jesse, you said it. That, that's where we're at, though, right? Done. And, and like, if it's yeah. not happening, if it's not happening this year, if if we have the same out, let's let's fast forward for a second and say it's 2024. And like we fall short in the wild card series again, that's a bad look. Like uh, and and GMs are out. Like we're we're sh- we're shipping off. Like this is this is a team that's got to got to got to make the ALCS next year, or it's been an absolute dis- not a disaster. But we've came up completely short and failed because we're going to lose a lot of those good core Blue Jays players. And that's exactly it too. I think if this core doesn't win this with this. If this front office does not win with this current core, you could probably say goodbye to Ross Atkins. I I don't know how ownership works with Mark Shapiro, but you could see a lot of massive changes up front. And I think the general manager group knows this, and they know that they have to go in and really take their eggs at some sustained playoff success, or else their jobs are on the line here too. But Riley, let's get right into it here. And I want to talk about this first one here, and that is Shohei Otani, Riley. And I guess... True or false? There has been a rumor that came out that said um, the Blue Jays are considered dark runners for Shohei Otani. We know the Blue Jays have had interest in Shohei Otani for years now, back when he was first posted. I think the Blue Jays were runner us, runners up to sign him, or they were very close. Um, and then there was talks at the trade deadline that maybe they'd get Otani. There were talks last offseason about the Blue Jays' interest in Otani. Mark Shapiro has muttered comments before saying, we have a budget in mind, but for extreme circumstances, look, they could go out and blow it open. And let's be real. The, th- the positive about signing Shohei Otani is that it's only going to cost you money. You don't have to um, send out Ricky Tiedemann or any of your top prospects. You know, the fit on the team, well, 29 teams in baseball would find a fit for Shohei Otani. Let's be real. But the fit on this team is incredible. He's, even if he's not pitching in his first year, he was still literally the best hitter in all of baseball last year. Um, yeah. So I guess. On the percentage o meter, Riley, what do you say your chances are of the Blue Jays ending up with Shohei Otani this offseason? I mean, the guy literally just won the American League MVP his second. I mean, really, Jesse, any team is gonna want to take this guy. And I mean, uh, I think we were talking before, and we said it's like it's gonna be the biggest contract in in pro sports, in North American pro sports. Um, it, he's an absolutely incredible, versatile player. And I mean, hell, we can find a spot for him, Jesse. Even if mm-hmm. he's not, even if he's not pitching, I don't care because we still have a lot. We basically, hey, the four starters that did well last year are going to be there again for us. And yep, all we, we have be. to do is find another rental starter, or or you know, we'll we'll find that fifth starter for Campy Shohei Otani if it is, uh, you know, in the second in the second year or whatever it is. Um, Either like it's a it's a it's a winning situation, but it's the owner is going to be is going to have to be someone who's able to write a big fat check at the end of the day. Yeah. That's what this is. Is it, it this might be an arms race for who has more zeros at the end of um at the end of their uh, check for Shohei Otani because he's he should ask for big money. He's one of the greatest players to probably step onto a ball field since. It, ever since <laughs> since the 1800s like Shohei's just a monster and uh yeah he's uh he's going to get his he's going to get his due i personally don't know if the jays are going to go for it it would be i can dream i can say yeah that'd be great and he certainly would be a good fit but um i think that there's uh there'll be another team that are going to absolutely give a ridiculous contract to him and um Maybe make that team a championship team. Who who knows? Way too early to tell where he even goes or or what it's going to look like. 
Two things I want to say from if the Blue Jays do decide to sign Shohei Otani, yes, it would be amazing. We would love that. Um, he's going to take a massive contract, which we said, probably 10 to 13 years, anywhere between 450 to $550 million. Rogers has the money. They can do that. I was always sick of the Blue Jays saying, oh, we can't afford it. We don't have enough money. We know how much money Rogers Communications makes. They can absolutely afford to do a move like this. But I do think if the Blue Jays do decide to acquire Shohei Otani, you could probably, unless the Blue Jays are going to go really crazy, say goodbye to a Vladimir Guerrero Jr. extension. You could probably say goodbye to a um, Bo Bichette extension. They would probably end up reaching free agency because I can't see the Blue Jays wanting to jump out millions and millions and millions of dollars. Now, I would love it if they did, but uh, see if that happens. And two things too here is, yeah, you say or Shohei Otani won't be able to pitch in year one, but you say Kikuchi is a free agent after next year. You just slide him in into Kikuchi's spot in the rotation. If the Blue Jays have to go six man, they have to go six man. So be it. You'll worry about it then. Um, look, I don't know if the Blue Jays are going to end up with Shohei Otani. You've seen them have targets in off seasons in the past, and it hasn't always worked out. But man, it would sure be nice to see Otani in Blue Jay blue next year. Yeah, I mean, that's the dream. And I think... You know, the idea is to bring in winners and look no further than the, uh, you know, um, uh, recently awarded American League MVP and mm -hmm. did it in. With his dog, know, very, too. You can bring his dog in as well. Very convincing fashion at that. Yeah. And yes. whether he pitches, Jesse, part of his value is that he is a, a two-way player and that he can pitch. But wh even if he doesn't pitch, Jesse, he's still one of the most valuable players in baseball anyways. I mean, the power speed combination that he possesses is, you know, only rivaled with guys like Acuna um, might have him beat in the, you know, the guy who won the national league MVP for instance there, but Otani has the tools to become a successful D eight, whatever you want to call him. Um, and then, yeah, he, you know, recovers and can pitch then he's a guy who can also finish top three in Cy Young voting as well. Um, mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's about as valuable as a player um, that there has ever been in the game of baseball. And I'm going to show you a little clip here of like, look what Shohei Otani, I mean, you already know what Shohei Otani can do, but look at how he can just take a Kevin Gosman splitter, hit one of the, or a fastball here. Yeah, fastball, and he just turns on it. The Blue Jays haven't had a lot of guys who have been able to really mash the fastball, and Shohei Otani had a plus-20 run differential against the fastball. He's really good, Riley. He's going to do great things, and I really, really do hope the Blue Jays can make a move and end up signing him here. All right, let's move on to another player we think the Blue Jays might be able to get. And Riley, consider this. Have you ever thought about maybe the Blue Jays call up their old friends, the Padres, a, a team we have history with making big trades with in the past, and we go after some of their top names? What about guys like Fernando Tatis Jr. or Juan Soto? I think those would classify as big moves for the Toronto Blue Jays to make. And look, Buster Olney from ESPN in one of his reports said there is a 100% chance that Juan Soto will be traded this offseason. We know the Blue Jays need some left-handed thump. We know the Blue Jays need some help in the outfield. I think uh, Juan Soto and or Fernando Tatis would do that, Bill, if that works. Riley, what are your thoughts on those players? I think, Jesse, this is this is great. Uh, you know, the Shohei one is big. You can dream on that. Uh, we're Now we're talking, we're not dreaming anymore. We're talking in really realistic territory. Um but I don't think it's going to be both. This is a one or the other kind of situation. Um, and I really like the one. Uh, I never, you know what, as far as the the, the uh, sons, the sons of former big leaguers, the juniors, if you want to call it that, when there was Ronald Acuna Jr. and Fernando Tatis Jr. and Vladimir Guerrero Jr., whatever. You know, I, I was probably less on Fernando Tatis anyways, a player that, I have been, you know, fascinated with since he came into Major League Baseball as Juan Soto. Um, one of the most, you know, elite um, guys as far as taking at-bats deep. His ability to recognize pitches in and out of the zone, uh, get bad on ball and hit, hit with, with power. And, you know, maybe not always, you know, making great contact, but just to be able to get on base as well. Um, with those power, with the power he possesses, he is a left-handed bat. I love that. And yes, we do need defense in the like another outfielder. Juan Soto is not going to put us in any plus columns as far as his defense goes. No, but honestly, I do not care. 
I do not care. This is this is a guy who's an absolute table setter. This this is a guy who is either second or third in your lineup. You put him if 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 the Blue Jays take him, I'm putting Bo Bichette lead off, and I'm batting Juan Soto second. Uh, mm, okay, because they're absolute table setters, and you hope you hope that Vladimir Guerrero Jr. can drive him in. Bo Bichette being able to get bat on ball, and then the plate discipline and eye of of Juan Soto. I, I have a lot of great things to say about him at the plate. And Tatis, I think, um, you know, a guy who maybe has matured a little bit more, uh, still a very young guy, very talented guy, but I would say there's less of a fit than Juan Soto. Juan Soto is a fantastic fit for any ball club. And I know it, there's been talk and he may have been like regressed a little bit from his monster years uh, with the Nats. However, I mean, he still has a lot of potential and he's going to do great things in Major League Baseball. He has a, I mean, he has Hall of Fame potential. Yeah, Juan he's Soto, he's on track. He is on track on to be a Hall track. of Famer. He has he has as far as Major League Baseball players that are still young. I'm not talking about uh, you know the guys that are ending their careers right now. We're talking about mm-hmm. guys who have played for seven, eight years who still have years to go in the, before they they're going to hang it up. Soto is one of those guys that I I will bank on now. I will say Juan Soto and knock on wood because I hope he gets there. He deserves it. He will get into Cooperstown because of how elite of a hitter, how unique of a hitter he is. And yeah, Jesse, any team would be happy to have him. Us and our relationship with the Padres, I think it's perfect. But I do think it's one or the other. And if it's between Soto and Tatis Jr., I think it's a no-brainer for me that I'm going Juan Soto. And I think it's I think it's very realistic uh, that that could happen as well. Yeah, look, Hall of Fame players, superstar players, especially players 25 years old like Juan Soto is, simply do not become available ever. If you're the Pittsburgh Pirates, Riley, you should be trying to trade for Juan Soto right now because, look, he's going to play on your team for a long time maybe the only gripe with Juan Soto is that he is a free agent at the end of this season coming up. So if the Blue Jays do trade for him, they'd have to give not only a lot to get him. You could probably say goodbye to Ricky Tiedemann. You could probably say goodbye to some of our other top prospects down in the farm. Um, and you run the risk of him only coming to Toronto playing one year and then leaving in a free agent. The Blue Jays do run that risk. However, we saw it work with the Toronto Raptors with Kawhi Leonard. They made a gamble. They ended up winning a championship. It can work. And there's something to be said about putting all your eggs in your basket. And look, Toronto's a great city. Juan Soto is going to come here. He puts up. He performs. People who do that tend to love and stay in the city. So I am really hoping hoping for Juan Soto. Um, if the Blue Jays do go out and make a move, I really do hope it is this one. And I'm with you. I think I'd rather that more than Tatis Jr., who I love the talent for Fernando Tatis. He's very good. Good in the outfield. Um, but Juan Soto's the guy here, right? Oh, a- a- absolutely. And, uh, I- and I mean, if that goes through, and God, I mean, ho- hopefully something like that. Because if you want to talk about big splashes, like we're talking about. And again, like the Shohei one, I think we can, you know, l- pretty much mutually say like it's, it's, a, it's a far cry from happening. Yes, there is still a chance. It's a non-zero chance. But the Juan Soto acquisition could very well happen. And if it does happen, Jesse, that's a, that is the type of ball player that is going to, I mean, you could pretty much say like with, with Vladdy and and how he kind of took a step back this year. If you have the addition of those two guys, Soto and Vladdy um, batting wherever you put them back and forth in the lineup, I assume that's how you would lay that out. I mean, Almost definitely, yep. You're, you're 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 bound to collect hits, collect runs off of those two bats in the middle of your lineup, and I think it's good. Obviously, Jesse, the idea is the guys at the top of the lineup get more at bats, and you essentially you know want to keep the ball rolling. Um, have guys at the top of the uh, top of the lineup that can get on base, and then the guys who can drive them in. Uh, and Soto is is that kind of guy, and again from the left side of the plate because it Varsho didn't have a tremendous amount of success at all last year. And I mean, with the absence of some of the free agents, um, you know, going away, our left-handed bats that we had in 2023, like Soto would be a fantastic fit and we know he can mash. 
Let's just keep an eye on that as the offseason progresses. I think um, we're going to have to see the Shohei Otani domino drop first. And if the Blue Jays don't end up with that, keep an eye on Juan Soto. I really do think that could happen. So, Riley, for the rest of these things, I went, okay, who is going to probably be a seller? Who is a team that is not on the rise, that wants pieces to move, that have superstar talent available? And look, a lot of the bad teams in baseball, teams like your Royals, your Tigers, um, teams like your Pirates, for example, they have young players. They are on the rise. They're not going to sell like Bobby Witt Jr. or Riley Green, for example. They're not going anywhere. So I tried to look at some teams that were have been good, that still have good players available that are probably on the de- descent here. So I got teams like the Milwaukee Brewers, the Angels, um, the Nationals. We've mentioned Lane Thomas in episodes before. They don't have a ton else other than him. And um, I feel like I'm missing one. Um, but either way, these these teams have players that might be willing to sell their top end players. So let's go into them a little bit. And I'm going to give you um, a couple names here, Riley, and we can talk about each of them individually if you'd like. But out of these names I give you, I want to know which one do you think the Blue Jays should go for first, okay? Okay. Okay, so how about names like Mike Trout, Hall of Famer, still in his mid-30s, still perform. He could be a very enticing piece, especially if the Angels do decide to... Uh, to shop there. Um, Luis Robert Jr. is another one. If the White Sox seem to be a team on decline who kind of seem like they should probably go into another rebuild, you can get a name like him or Eloy Jimenez. And then the Brewers, for example, who just lost Brandon Woodruff for the year. He's going to go down for surgery. They have some guys you could look in for, like uh, Christian Yelich plays the outfield. Left-handed bat could fit for the Blue Jays here. Corbin Burns, or one of their starting pitchers, could be had. Or maybe you can go into their bullpen, get like a Devin Williams or any of those things, Riley. So out of the trade candidates there, Trout, Luis Robert, or anything from the Brewers, which one do you like the best? So I'll just say, I mean, because when people heard the one name on that, they're like, whoa, and they probably had a big reaction to Mike Trout. (laughs) And listen, Mm -hmm. Mike Trout is a phenomenal baseball player. And I mean, still is, but let's be honest. I don't, I don't want that contract. Like whether he's, I mean, he's earned his, he's earned his cash. Um, but I can't, ju- you can't justify having Mike Trout on this team. Cause I don't think he's going to play his worth, um, in Rogers center and with uh, guys around this team. Now it would be, be a lot of fun, but at this point in his career, I don't know if that's the best decision with the other guys that we have on the books. Uh, cause I would really like to bring some of our youthier players back and I don't know how long Trout's going to hold on. Hey, don't get me wrong. He's probably going to be an Iron Man, play till he's 39, 40. But I don't know how he'll be hitting or fielding or running at that point in his career. I would rather, you know, not take that one. I do like Luis Robert and Eloy Jimenez. Um, Eloy Jimenez, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point in this guy's career, he led all of Major League Baseball in home runs. This is a guy with just pure power. Wow. And if you want yeah. to talk about, no, it, I mean, really though, I, another kind of another guy who will probably, I'm surprised he already hasn't made the switch over to um, first base um, because he's another bad defensive, bigger guy, you know, a little bit sluggish defensive liability, but a great bat. But Luis Robert here is the, is a big one where he is, you get into the category of superstar yet, and he's not, you know, as, um, decorated as let's say a Juan Soto, but he also hasn't, he's been around for less time. Um, I, he has tremendous potential, a guy who's going to finish in MVP voting probably multiple times in his career. Um, and then you go over to the Brewers. If anyone, you know, I like a relief pitcher like Devin Williams. I think he's a phenomenal arm. Um, Yelich, another contract I'm not in love with. And yeah, when, I'm not huge on Yelich either. No, or, or, you know, as far as their pitchings go, the pitchers go, the, the Brewers have a fantastic pitching, starting pitching staff, and their bullpen is phenomenal as well. But um, I don't know how, I, I think as far as, you know, the splash we want to make um, is adding a guy from their team the best move we could do. So I guess all in all, to answer your question, I don't know if I like a ton of those guys. Let's say Luis Robert. Um, just, he's an exciting young player to watch and, um, uh, and you know, get him from, get him from, I like guys from the AL central. So maybe one of the white Sox guys, either Eloy or, uh, Luis. 
Yeah, um, Mike Trout is an interesting one to me. Look, I loved Mike Trout. Mike Trout could retire today, and he would still be a first ballot Hall of Famer with the work that he has done and all that stuff. Uh, he is getting older, though. He's 32 right now. He'll be 33 going into the season next year, or at least early in the season next year, and only hit 18 home runs last year, Riley. He did only play uh, 362 plate appearances, so he did battle injuries. And I think Mike Trout has had an injury stint now in – Five of the last six years, six of the last seven now. So he hasn't been exactly a pillar of health. And you've started to see things like the strikeout rate and the K rate climb a little bit from Mike Trout. So look, he's still under contract for a long time. He would still be an impact player. Do not get me wrong. He still runs the base as well. He still plays great defense. I think the best Mike Trout is behind us. And look, if you trade for Trout right now, you are really trading for him for the performances he can put up in this first two years here. And then you just sit with him on your roster while you go through the decline. It's a, it's a gamble. The blue Jays are going to have to really look into. And if they think Mike Trout in probably his two better years can put up and the decline's not as sharp, then it's a move you absolutely need to look into doing, especially well, it's going to cost you a ton, but it, look, if the Blue Jays want to win a World Series, that's what they got to do. And Luis Robert Riley, I think this is the one too. If you could pry him away from the White Sox, the power is real. 38 home runs last year. He's 95th percentile or better in a lot of the power numbers, 92nd percentile and expected slugging percentage. Like This is a type of player you could really use, especially for a Blue Jays team who is lacking power. I think uh, if you remember correctly, him and Vlad matched up in the home run derby this year and it, they both put on quite a big show there. So I agree. Uh, Luis Robert Jr. is probably the name I would want out of all the players on this list here. Yeah. Young, exciting outfielder, man. And yet as far as Trout goes, you know, I, 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 I totally agree with you, the accolades and the accomplishments he's going into the hall of fame regardless. Um, but yeah, two years and Hey, don't get me wrong. He could put up very above replacement level numbers until he's 39, but for the amount that he is, of you know, that contract, I think it's pretty even. It's not front-loaded or back-loaded. I think it's a consistent amount every year. Um, and what what's, you know, he's already made his worth with the MVPs, the all-star appearances. I would love to say playoff victories, but I can't. Trout just kind mm -hmm. of snake bit <laughs> by that. It's not very his fault. No, it is certainly not Mike Trout's fault. I mean... When you look back and say, you know, players that have worn the L.A. or Anaheim or California Angels, whatever you want to call them, Mike Trout uh, may stand alone as their goat, um, you know, as, as, as far as players who have came through and stayed in their organization. But again, Jesse, um, are, are we going to get a year of good baseball? We could get three good years out of Mike Trout, but I, I don't want to, for what we still have to give up, I, I, I'm not willing to take that risk. I still think there are better options out there um, than to take a slightly declining and maybe injury ridden Mike Trout. Yeah, I mean, in terms of other big end, high end power plays that the Blue Jays could look to go, the only other name I could think of that might be on the move this offseason is New York Mets first baseman Pete Alonso. Now, look, the Blue Jays already have a pretty good first baseman. And um, so one of them would have to be a full time designated hitter. But Pete Alonso is the real only other superstar name I could think of that the Blue Jays could really go out and get. Um, like the Rockies don't have anyone that is really tempting to get rid of. The Reds are a team on the rise. They're not going to trade any of the young players. The Cubs are going for it. Like, would you have interest in Pete Alonso? I guess uh, if the Blue Jays went that route. Uh, again, it's um, again. You got two guys who could play really good first base, and Vladdy probably not going to go back to third base in his career. So a full time DH. Uh, I'm still less in love. There's uh, again. Uh, you could find two players that can kind of equal a Pete Alonso, and um, I wouldn't be upset not to get him for sure. Um, I don't th a, a guy who can hit a ton of home runs, a lot of swing and miss, a big a big bopper bat. I mean, he might have for if you look back. I think I don't have the numbers in front of me or anything, but over the last how many seasons? Where you know, let's say four years, where does he stand as far as home runs go? I mean, he's a premier home run hitter, Jesse. There's no no doubt about it. And as, but as far as Pete Alonso's game goes compared to Vladdy, um, you know, the defense obviously favors Vladdy a little bit more. But are we really willing to, you know, find a, you know, a, 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 move, a move for Pete Alonso? I, I don't know. I think we can find other good bats. Uh, maybe not going to hit 50 home runs, but uh, I think we can uh, put our money elsewhere.
Yeah, and I, I really agree. Look, I think if we're going to sign a full-time DH, let's just go the Jorge Soler route, a guy who can provide power like that. It was going to cost us nothing but money. I think I'd rather do that. Um, that's all I could think of for trade candidates, Riley. I guess the other option for the Blue Jays to make big moves is if we don't sign Otani, we could sign some of the other very high-end free agents on this list. So I've got, well... Four names for you here. Um, one of them we've talked about already before, but those are um, Yamamoto, the guy who's coming over from Japan. I think we talked about him a few episodes ago. Uh, Cody Bellinger is another one. Or the Blue Jays just go attack. Hey, you can never have too much pitching. And maybe they go with an Aaron Nola or a Blake Snell. Blake Snell, who's just coming off his second Cy Young Award. So, Riley, any of those moves? Yamamoto, Bellinger, Aaron Nola, or Snell? Do you think they go that route? I, I mean, the pitcher would be great. Hey, if you could lock down a Cy Young winner, that would be fantastic. I personally, Jesse, based off last year's performance, I don't think I'd go acquire an elite pitcher. I'm looking at getting the offense. I'm going to, and I hate making assumptions. I hate taking risks. I don't want to take chances because we had a good thing with pitching last year. I don't want to take it for granted, but here's my thought is that we possibly have a, a year next the year next year 2024 we actually repeat and have very good starting pitching and get very good relief appearances from the guys we have in the bullpen um i'm i'm thinking about yeah a guy like Cody Bellinger and a guy like Juan Soto hey Blake Snell would be cool but again there you have two opening day starters on your team already and I really think that he's going to, he deserves a, 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 a big contract, a big pay. And I don't think the Jays invest in, in Blake Snell. In all honesty, we already have a, if we already have a good left handed pitcher on the rise who might have Cy Young potential, maybe. I don't want to say Ricky Tiedemann does or when he's going to be big league ready, but the guys that we already have, I think can do the job just fine. And then maybe add the addition of another kind of fourth fist starter would be good. But uh, Jesse, I'm all about like Bellinger and Soto, two guys at the top of my list. I want to find a good uh, left-handed bat that can play the outfield. Obviously huge difference with Bellinger and Soto. We have an elite defender uh, versus a not elite defender and a guy who struggles mightily uh, with plate discipline and, you know, with strikeout to his walks. And then a guy who absolutely feasts on, you know, walking around the bases and putting balls into the seat. So, I mean, it's still Soto for me, but again, Bellinger out of those four guys is certainly my pick. Yeah, I would probably go Yamamoto one, just because if you've been listening to this show for years, you know I love upside and I see massive strikeout numbers coming from Yamamoto in Japan, and that gets me excited. Uh, he's probably the youngest out of all this group too, so he'd be around for a long time. He would be my first choice, but I agree with you, Riley. Pitching isn't really a source of need, and I think if we're going to sign pitchers, it's going to be more of the fourth or fifth type, type starting pitcher, like a Seth Lugo and Nick Martinez, a guy who could probably pitch out of the bullpen if you had to. I really do think the Blue Jays are going to go that route instead. And Riley, we asked our friends on Twitter because the Blue Jays are going to make a big high-end move. Which high-end move would you want to make? And I gave them four choices. Um, Otani, trade for Soto, trade for Mike Trout, and sign Cody Ballinger. First of all, which one did you pick, and what do you think the fans chose? Well, um, I mean, I, I I chose Soto. Yeah, um, I also I, chose Juan Soto. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, Hey, is it, I don't think, I don't think it's Bellinger. I don't think it's Cho. They're going to, uh, the people want Otani. I'm sure of it. Of course the people want Otani Riley. It was a blow away. 66.7% of people thought the blue Jays should trade for Shohei Otani and who could blame them, man. Shohei Otani in Toronto, although it'd be a headache financially. And although it'd be a franchise altering move, it would sure be very fun to see Shohei Otani in Toronto blue. Uh, Riley, is there any other name you think that maybe I'm not thinking of here that the Blue Jays go big? There is always one every offseason that surprises you out of nowhere. Um, do you have one off the top of the head you think the Blue Jays could go get? I mean, again, uh, I like a lot of guys from the American League Central. I don't know why. I never really felt this way, but the guys that uh, were there, uh, Casey has a lot of interesting um players uh i really like a guy like nick prado uh um, okay an mlb ready still guy. young like, prospect still type young. Yep. I, and again has not hit any sort of ceiling 
But just a guy I would probably bank on that's going to have a good year if we can get him from under KC for a decent enough deal. I'm sure they value him mightily. Um, you put an end to my – I love – Riley Green is a player. I have – I think I have him picked for my 2000 – between 2028 and 2031. I have the next basically 20 or 18 years of MVPs written, written down somewhere. Um, Riley Green's one of them. Um, if we can acquire him, I don't think we will. But those are my two – Two favorite guys, young guys, uh, good hitters, can play the outfield. So, And I mean, hey, at the end of the day, they're both lefty bats as well. So what are we really mm-hmm. saying, Jesse? Do we desperately, desperately, number one item of business, really, really need and want a left-handed outfielder who can bat in the middle of this Blue Jays order? Sounds like Shohei Otani to me. I, but, but, yeah, <laughs> DH, so outfield. Like, I, I still like, hey. Don't get me wrong. I, I know Shohei's a DH, but like I it, teach him. God, man, he can play outfield. I'm sure he can play outfield. The guy's built yeah. like a, oh, a gazelle. Like he's he's mm-hmm. an athletically built man. He's the most athletic DH in MLB history. Are you kidding me? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, lock me in for that. But I don't know if the Jays will get him or not. If I had to suffer through Juan Soto defense, I would be more than okay with that based off the plate appearances we'll get from that guy. All right. And to wrap up this conversation, I have three true or false questions, Riley. So just give me a true or false answer to all three of these. The first one, the Blue Jays payroll entering its 2024 season will be the highest it's ever been in franchise history. True or false? I I think so, Jesse. I I really think think so so too. Yep. We're adding more money. Like guys with the backloaded contracts, Barrios will be making more money. Like guys, like it'll just, it always goes exponentially up. I believe, I believe that is true. I agree with that as well. Even if we don't sign like an Otani or an Asavend, I think just whoever the Blue Jays sign, it's going to push us over the luxury tax and into that limit. Um, next question, true or false? We will go into the season with a long-term extension for either one of or both, Bo Bichette or Vladimir Guerrero Jr. True or false? I think, and I hate to say it, I think this is false. And I don't think we're, in my actual opinion, I think Vladdy gets an extension before Bo, which I think is ridiculous because I want to see Bo. His, uh, we talked about, when I said he got the contract, I, I basically said what? Clock's starting, Jesse. This is how long he's got before he's, you know, packing it up and going somewhere else. Because I think, I, but I don't think, hey, I think we do uh, basically have a $300, $300 million payroll going into next year. And we don't offer an extension to Bo or Vlad. I agree with you on this one. I think the time um, to do it would have been uh, last offseason or the offseason before. Now that they're two years out from free agency, I don't see what either player would have unless the Blue Jays really just go above and beyond and make a deal for um, for either of these guys and really do an overpay, which I don't think the Blue Jays are going to do. And my last one, Riley, is number one prospect Ricky Tiedemann will still be with the Toronto Blue Jays come opening day. True or false? I, so I want to say, again, you can't have your cake and eat it too. And I think if the Jays are to make a big acquisition that involves moving pieces and, and getting a player via trade and an impactful player at that, I believe Ricky Tiedemann might have to be one of those pieces. And I think that's well warranted. I'm going to go that he's not going to be on the opening day, uh, you know, he's not going to be on the Florida man. He's not going to be on our minor league system. I'm going to say trade him just as of right now, I could change my mind next week. We'll see how my mood is, but for right now I'm locked in. We got to get players to win and get them, get them here so we can win. Cause we got two years to do this, Jesse. And I mean, they, the front office has got to realize that too. And what we do actually have to move. Can't have your cake and eat it too. Like, honestly, we got to we gotta make some moves that are going to win us a ship. Stay tuned because I do believe the news are coming. We I was at this point last offseason when the Blue Jays traded away Teoscar Hernandez. So it could definitely, it seems like something could be boiling and something could be boiling here soon. All right. Well, Riley, moving on. It's time to get into a little bit of the award stuff that were handed out. And no, the Blue Jays did not win MVP. And no, the Blue Jays did not win Cy Young. No, the Blue Jays did not win Rookie of the Year. And no, the Blue Jays did win Managers of the Year. But we had some Blue Jays players 
get votes. And I wanted to start with this one, which was one of our um, Cy Young Award favorites. At least one of my bold prediction was this player would win a Cy Young. Um, and that was Kevin Gosman, who ultimately did not win the Cy Young Award here. Um, Garrett Cole ended up winning unanimous, but a third place finish for Kevin Gosman after finishing 11th the year before. And um, this is now four straight years, Riley. The Toronto Blue Jays have had somebody finish top three in Cy Young Award voting, which I think we're going to look back on in the future and be like, wow, the Blue Jays actually really did have some very good starting pitching here. So a little congrats to you, Kevin Gosman, third on Cy Young and um, a very good season. And let's hope it gets better from here. And none of them clicked at the same time either. Like, hey, they've been good pitchers, but none. We haven't had that that rocket tandem of two aces, like a uh, Maddox and Tom Glavin or Maddox and Smoltz type guy. But Kevin Gosman, I won't be surprised if we're back here next year having the same discussion on how Kevin Gosman placed insert place here, whether he wins the award, finishes second, third, got beat. And I'll say this: I won't give a lot of credit to Garrett Cole. I will give a ton of cre- credit. <laughs> no, boo. <laughs> so I'll give some, a lot of credit to Sonny Gray. Um, yeah, great who, year. Who had a fantastic year. Did I have not thought about him being a great pitcher and probably since he wore these lids right here on the top of my head. However, I mean, look, I mean, you got the list here in front of us right there. Mm-hmm. I want to give some love, Jesse. I'm all over this one. Is that Chris Bassett got a third place finish. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I did I not see that Patrick coming. Bassett. He he is like fine wine. He is getting better with every year. Now, I don't know if this would be his career year or not. I don't really care, frankly, because he has pushed his potential upward. I mean, Chris Bassett was not a player that was supposed to be as good as he is. He's a workhorse, and he won a lot of baseball games this year. I believe the most are tied for the most in the American League anyways. But, I mean, hey – yeah, there, we might not have two guys finish in the top for Cy Young voting or whatever. For the last how many years, though, we've had that num- clear number one on our team. And this year, it was Kevin yeah, and- Gosman. And uh, again, so who is it next year? You say Kikuchi? It's, no, well, hey, I wish. I think, it, <laughs> I think it's going to be Gosman again, honestly. Or the safe I, bet, yeah. Or am I going to be like Jesse? Or is this player even on our roster right now? Do we acquire? Sure, this? sure. Like, no, no. But, hey, the four guys who had it, like, Barrios, Bassett, Gosman, Kikuchi. Like, I'm banking on those four, maybe not to pitch. Some of them are going to have better years than they did last year by a little bit. And some of them are going to have, you know, a little bit of an off year. Not that bad. We're not talking about 2022 Barrios and Kikuchi. I'm talking, you know, more Lee, more, you know, career average wise, but we're, we, that's where we want our complimentary piece. But I'm going to say, if I'm to pick one guy again, it's, it's, it's got, it's got to be Kevin Gosman. He's, he's, he, in this new baseball, if you want to call it that he was, he was one of the best in, uh, you know, in the, in the 2023 year again. Like I, I let off by saying, like I trust two guys on this team: one pitcher, one hitter. Kevin Gosman's a pitcher I trust the most. And I think that goes for a lot of Jays, Jays fans, and and Jay personnel. So no Mitch White, uh, twenty twenty four Cy Young finalist, eh? No, no, no. <laughs> but you said Kikuchi. I'll bring. I'll I'll put my okay. money on Kikuchi before I put it on Mitch White. All right, and to the hitting side, I suppose, um, Shohei Otani was the unanimous MVP. The Angels now have had five MVPs in the last decade, which is wild stuff. Uh, unanimous. Corey Seager finishing second. Marcus Semien, our old friend, finishing third. You had to go all the way down to 16th on the list to see Bo Bichette um, make an appearance up there. And uh, I was actually very surprised by this. I really did think that um, they'd get another one up there. He did get a seventh place vote and two eighth place votes um, for Bo Bichette. But yeah, not the best year. A lot of names ahead of him for the Toronto Blue Jays. And uh, this is three straight years now. I think Bo Bichette's finished 11th, 10th, and now 16th in MVP voting. And you also notice no Vladimir Guerrero Jr. on that list, which is a problem, I would say. When you go down this list, it gets insane. That Devers and Cal Devers, Cal Raleigh, and uh, I said Isaac Paredes. I, I, is yeah, there. I know, but Cal Raleigh, big dumper from the Mariners, getting a ninth place vote. Shohei Otani, though, I mean, you can't you can't say enough about that guy. Two Rangers teammates, and then yeah, Bo Bichette was our MVP vote. 
Holy crap! There's a Josh Naylor sighting. That's uh, that's mm-hmm. great. What a, what a great what a great list um, of of guys there. But the problem is not enough Blue Jays at all. One Blue Jay with Bo Bichette, and that's a Bo Bichette who missed important time with this club. So I mean, Jesse, like he plays a full year. Like, where does he finish? Or he, you know, if he finishes the year out the way he was playing all year, or Vlad picks it up. I mean, we should have, we should have at all times, in my belief, there are 15 teams in the American League and 15 teams in the National League. By my calculations, if we're a top competitive team, we should have two guys that finish in the top 12 of MVP voting. I don't know how my math sounds to some people. To me, that makes perfect sense. Maybe not two guys in the top 10. Two guys in the top 12 would be fantastic, and we didn't come close to that. And that's where the big disappointment in this year's Toronto Blue Jays team was. We're going to need that to continue next year um, in order to do it. Riley, but the most hilarious thing that came out to me for award week uh, this week was this one, Riley. And um, I don't know where you would have ranked out of the top 15 managers in the American League before you got to John Schneider. But John Schneider did receive an American League MVP uh, uh, manager of the year vote. Now, he finished seventh. The winner was Brandon Hyde of the Orioles, which should surprise nobody. But somebody and somebody from the L.A. chapter gave John Schneider a manager of the year vote. And uh, if you were to make a case for John Schneider, a manager of the year, what would your case be? Because I was struggling to think of one. I'm not making a case uh, for him, Jesse. Yeah, honestly. right. We've seen him all year. I mean, like, yeah. Listen, I mean, it's it, it's cool. That's 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 a feel good. That's a feel good thing, I guess. Maybe some guy threw some love to him, you know, and and maybe that's a booster for him. I don't know. Um, the fa- the the fact of the matter is, like, a, a, we saw John Schneider too much, and he was under the gun far too many times for me to think that he had a great year as the manager this year. We were, he had things he could be scrutinized from and had a lot of questionable decisions made. Now, I know that we underperformed a lot of those times, but if we're not talking about the manager, he's probably doing his job. If we're talking about the skipper, there's a good chance it's because he's, we don't think he's doing a good job, right? And I don't think, I don't think, I think he did a satisfactory job um, mm-hmm. at some times. And then at some points, I think that he was not a good manager, but I don't think, I think, I think you give whoever voted for him at third, like why the hell didn't you give Dusty Baker that third place? Vote? <laughs> right. You right. Know what I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know who these guys that are voting are. I was going to say it back at the Chris Bassett one. I guarantee you, that guy is someone like me who's voting like it's 2002. And he goes, ah, Chris Bassett leads the league and wins and automatically checks his box. 200 innings pitch. Absolutely, yeah, right? Two, two, yeah, exactly. 20-game <laughs> 20, 20 winner. The guy's whip could be 145. Nope. He has <laughs> yeah. the most wins. We're giving him this award. Which, hey, I used to love that too. I'm a small, I'm a small-minded, dopey guy that loves things based <laughs> off you know how, how many rbis did he have is what i would ask but anyways for john schneider i feel like we talked he was under the the radar and and or you know on the radar far too often uh for me to believe that he was a good manager a and b deserved a manager of the year vote obviously went to brandon hyde anyways who i didn't think is a great manager anyways so does it really the matter? Team, the team was yeah, great, and that's, yeah, that's what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. It's a team award. What are we even talking about? It really about? is. It really is. Like, Because I'll be honest. like Nothing against Brandon Hyde as a person. I don't think that he's a great manager. I think the best manager on that list, you know, in no disrespect to Dusty Baker, um, who's stepping, who will be stepping down shortly, uh, is Rocco Baldelli. But again, mm. what do I know about baseball? Rocco Baldelli's never managed a team I've played for, and I haven't <laughs> sure. spoken with Rocco's team, you know, quite some time. So I can't exactly tell you how he's doing. So again, Jesse, what is Manager of the Year award, anyways? It's more team oriented. But for John Schneider, I think you know you could look and say that the team underperformed, but he still made some wrong decisions. That whether they cost us the game or not, people were still talking about him. I just thought it was hilarious at the end because we have um, we have 
downplayed uh, John Schneider for most of the year, but someone out there was like, nah, still good. So somebody sees the optimist side of John Schneider behind the manager seat. Maybe, you know what some- it was? I guarantee it. No, someone clicked, someone screwed up. They were going for rookie. <laughs> they went to give a third place vote to rookie of the year, Davis Schneider, and accidentally. Sure, sure. It. That's what it was. I figured it out. Some, one of them screwed up and no one wanted to admit their mistake. I'm, sure I'm pretty sure. Was. That had happened before. I think when Kevin Pillar, it might not have been Kevin Pillar, but when he was with the Braves or the Dodgers, he accidentally received a uh, like a fifteenth place MVP vote. So it does oh. happen. It does. Yeah, happen. I I remember this now. But who mm-hmm. who knows, Jesse? Who knows? All right, some minor news and notes to end up the show here. Um, Mitch White is out of Major League options, so if he is still with the team come opening day, he will have to be on the big league roster, or else the Blue Jays risk losing him to waivers. Riley, tonight in about two hours, so probably by the time this episode airs or the time you're listening it, is the non-tender deadline. We talked about the non-tender candidates a few. The obvious ones for the Toronto Blue Jays to be cut are Adam Simber and maybe Santiago Espinal might get cut. Maybe the Blue Jays do make a trade between now and then to get one of them off the wrister. Uh, Trevor Richards is another interesting name, too, if the Blue Jays do decide they want to save some money. But I do think Trevor Richards will still be around. And the Blue Jays did add a player to the 40-man roster. We added left-handed pitcher Adam Mako, who was the other guy in the Teoscar Hernandez-Eric Swanson trade. Um, The lefty who had a very good year in between single A and double A. Um, The Blue Jays chose to keep him, protecting him from the Rule 5 draft. Uh, Look, he had solid stuff. He beat the 30-grade command allegations. 17.5 strikeout to walk ratio. Um with a much longer workout. Um, I am really excited to see how Adam Mako develops and seeing how the Blue Jays protected him off um, being able to grab from the Rule 5 draft. It sounds like the Blue Jays are excited in this player as well. So out of those new things, Riley, in less than a minute, anything catch your attention? Yeah, let's just, I mean, hey, let's go quickly and touch on the bullpen and say, like, I don't really care about a guy like Trevor Richards. They're a dime a dozen. What I care about is a guy like Adam Mako, I think. That's kind of exciting when you uh, add a new guy to your 40 men like that, because he's definitely going to be, you're definitely going to see him in the spring. If that's the case, you're yep. going to see him oh, in, yeah. and get innings in spring training. And there's a guy that why, if, Hey, if he's cooking in the spring and he's doing things in, in early on in spring training, it's like, why would you cut him or send him down or anything like that? Like you're going to want to keep a guy around. So he's a guy that you should take note to. Um, if he does well, he could possibly ride a spot. Um, on the big league club. Now that's maybe a little far fetched, but he, you know, if there's a good chance he could go to bust through the ranks very quickly, especially as a relief pitcher. Um, if he's, if he's doing well, cause you got to play who's good. You got to, you got to, I guess you don't say start who's hot, but you got to put in, you know, the relief pitcher that you think is going to do best versus matchup. I think he's be him being a left-handed pitcher. Um, I think that's even more crucial that if he is being successful, then he jumps over some of the right-handers in the depth chart uh, just based off usage alone. So for me, that one jumps off the page because it's, I mean, again, uh, not a super exciting guy. Anytime you could talk about a bullpen pitcher before he is pitched um, a big league inning, I think uh, I think there's a little bit of potential there. I'm not going to say that he's going to be a 50-save closer, but again, he'll be a good tool for the Blue Jays to use. I agree with you there. And actually some breaking news just coming through. It does seem like the Blue Jays are non-tendering Adam Simber. So uh, thank you for your service. 323 ERA in your first few years. He was pretty bad this year. But look, that 2021 team, when we traded for Trevor Richards and Adam Simber, um, that really stabilized the bullpen. So he did some good work. So, uh, so long, Adam Simber. And we wish you best on wherever you end up. And we'll keep you in mind as we finish out our immaculate grids. And we need another player there. Adam Simber, we will remember you. Um, one more bit of news. I guess two more bits of news, Riley. The first one, um, Atlanta was awarded the All-Star Game in 2025. I thought, really thought the Blue Jays could get an All-Star Game there. We won't. Which means our next chance for an All-Star Game is 2027. And if Riley and you and I are ever going to play in that celebrity softball game, First step is getting the uh, All-Star Game to Toronto. So I think uh, we have to set our sights up to 2027 for our next goal for that. Do you have something quick on that? No, I mean, I guess we need some more subscribers and things by then. (laughs) Yes. Um, Subscribe to the channel, please. I'm ready to mash. I'm ready to mash against like some superstar some superstar guys there some I mean like in all honesty like cuz then if he goes to Toronto and it's like, "Oh yeah, like I could be playing, you know, second base beside like Scudero or Aaron Hill or something like that. So I mean, uh, there's there's always a there's always a chance. I feel like Atlanta being is is it's on the rise. I mean, Atlanta is basically pit, like they took like what two years off 
um, between yeah, the they had one in 2010, I believe. Uh, their All Star no, game. Sorry, no, I know. I mean, as far as their dominance goes, they're they're oh, yeah. they're a big market ball club. And I mean, Atlanta. They just had a guy who won the MVP. I mean, they got a guy like Matt Olson that's there. Good young pitchers. Like, I mean, yeah, the yeah, they're good. We got to do so. We upgraded the facility, which is fantastic. I think it's only a matter of time before the All-Star game comes to Toronto. But then again, a team like the Tampa Bay Rays have never hosted an All-Star game because That's they fine. want they want more than 35 people to attend as well. <laughs> if, if they get an All-Star game, I'm sure they'll at least get 10,000 people there uh, they, without a doubt. Need, yeah, you'd be sitting like you'd, you'd, basically you'll be flying in helicopters over. Oh, you can't, no, you can't even do that. Cut a big hole out of the drop. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> what an awful idea. Who the hell? Or just it light it on fire. Like we've been oh saying to do for the top for years. Yeah. I wonder, you know how many baseballs are probably stuck in, in the top of that? Like it's just all going to come down like popcorn <laughs> machine at one point. What a ridiculous that, ball diamond. It truly is a uh, nightmare of horrors down at the drop. Um, one more piece of news, Riley. Old friend DeMarlo Hale, who was the bench coach for John Gibbons all those years while he was here, he is back with the organization, Riley. And his technical position is associate manager under John Schneider. Um, Riley, do you have any idea what that means? And <laughs> you know what it means to me? Um, it, he's basically when if John Schneider gets canned, he's basically the interim manager. Like that's kind of what it's telling me. Like that's like when they say hire your own replacement. It's like, well, we hired <laughs> sure. your replacement for you. He's gonna understudy you, and as soon as you know, we think that you've had enough, Mister Schneider. Um, hails in, and you know you're out of the game, and you may never manage a big league team again. I like Demarlo Hale in his first stint. I mean, we did we did just lose Luis Rivera, so a guy that yep. he would have coached with as well. I like familiar faces, man, so very, very cool in that. Yeah, um, I think his technical term is he's going to be a lot of defensive work. He's going to be like a defensive strategist, as Don Mattingly is going to take over more of the offensive side of the ball. So I really think that's what's happening here. The Blue Jays now have like an offensive coordinator, and now with DeMarlo Hale, a defensive coordinator, like a lot of football teams have. And I guess, uh, hey... Whatever I, I don't think having more voices in the clubhouse can hurt, right? Especially if you have guys going through and sending all these sp special information to these players. I think it is a good thing going forward for this team. And hey, it can't hurt, right? So then what's the downside? Yeah, and I mean, I just put in my re my resume for six inning left field coach for the Toronto Blue Jays. So sure. I, mean, if, I mean, hey, like, yeah, with all the coaches, right? Might as well just start making stuff up. Tuesday night what? games only, though. Yeah, well, dollar dog night, of course, Riley. That's uh, why yeah, you have so, to be there right, for those yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that's going to do it for our episode here today. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. A lot of big things we discussed here on this episode. I think uh, if the Blue Jays rumor is true and they are going to make one of these big moves, I think it's going to be one of these things that we mentioned here. So you can get yourselves excited for the offseason for things to come. Riley, I would bet by the time we come back on here next week, the Blue Jays have done something. And if the Blue Jays do do something very dramatic, you can bet we'll be on here doing our live reaction and stuff. So make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel so you do not miss anything when the Blue Jays do end up making a big move. Riley, was there anything else you wanted to add here? I think that we've got most of it covered. I mean, I hope that the the they pull through and actually give us some, you know, real material to talk about. It would be nice. And, with, you know, without even talk about it, it would be really nice, you know, before the new year to go in, you know, to the month of December, even before spring training is really on anyone's minds and, you know, make a groundbreaking acquisition. I mean, that will, that will basically, you know, you want to talk about, you know, tipping the dominoes and getting things rolling. Why the hell don't we make that big splash? You know, you talk mm -hmm. about Rogers having all this money. Like, for we we gotta we gotta at least make an effort. I mean, yeah, you can say that we've tried in previous years, but I mean, why don't we just try and be the Yankees? Why don't we just sure. be or the, the Dodgers? You, right. Just if a problem persists, throw a wallet at it. Or if a problem you know happens, throw a wallet at it. If the problem persists. Throw another wallet at it. Why don't we just take that uh, approach to things and, you know, just who cares about the luxury tax? We'll deal with that later. Hey, Amen. Hey, look, at the end of the day, it's not our money we're spending, right? I'd rather the money go to players on the ball diamond than into some rich owner's pockets. And uh, that would make us all 
Happy as Blue Jays fans. But until then, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you again for tuning into the episode. Please make sure you like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And we'll be back next week to recap more Buds and Blue Jays stuff.